Uh, I call the Development Review Board meeting of September 5th to order. The, um, we have minutes from our August the 20th meeting for approval. I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes of August 20th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any comments, corrections, observations, misprints? Inaccuracies. Okay. Um, there being no comments on the board, uh, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Those against? I abstain. Five, is it? Five zero one. Thank you. Abstain from the minutes. Well, I just. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's. It's Wednesday. <laughs> it is a Wednesday, that's true. That's right. Um, We're confused. At the DRB, we hear applications for land development in the town of Brattleboro and appeals of zoning administrative decisions. Procedurally, the Development Review Board operates on the record. Broadly, this means that we take a clear record of testimony from the applicant and any interested parties and then issue a written decision with our findings. Applicants and members of the public should be aware that as we are on the record, this is your opportunity to comment and provide evidence relating to an application. If our decision is appealed to the Environmental Court, the Court will not take additional testimony at its hearing, but will look at the evidence from our hearings here, the regulations, and determine if, determine if the evidence supports the findings. Sorry, the evidence supports this Board's decision. So I strongly encourage all of you here to speak up at this hearing. As we're on the record, we're going to ask that you affirm that your testimony be truthful. So would the applicants and anyone wishing to speak to an application please stand and affirm the following. I hereby affirm that the evidence I give in the cause under consideration should be the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Thank you very much. Um, it just should be noted that applicants require a majority vote of the board to succeed. That is four votes out of seven. That's the full board. If we do not have a full board present to hear your application, then we will consider a request to continue to the next meeting. I think tonight that we are okay for all applications. We don't have one, two, three, four, five, six. We are short, a little short, but we are covered, I think, for all applications. Um, Brian, can you confirm that the meeting has been properly warned? The meeting has been properly warned. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for disclosure of conflicts of interest and or ex-party communications for any members of the board. Um, not in one of the ones that's... Not in one of the areas being considered. I asked Brian about it earlier. Do, uh, do you have... Um, any financial, bad. sorry? No, no any financial bad. incentive in any sense? Any? Any okay. Um, I, I also, on one of the tri park applications, have a piece of commercial property that's abutting across the other side of the brook. Um, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll ask that we'll ask the applicant if they have an issue with either. Mr. Bushy's hearing that application or myself hearing that application. I stand, I don't stand to gain from it. I have no financial interest in the application before us. Okay. With that said, I'll um, open the public hearing and call application 2012-102 um, Jacobs Engineering for the State of Vermont for site plan and conditional use. If you could come forward to the table on the left, actually. It will hold up. <laughs> the, um, 
These proceedings are recorded and the TV camera is in that direction. So feel free to sort of address us from maybe the left hand side of the of the map. And the map or the plans are pointing towards the camera so that they have some idea of understood. So um, please tell us about the application. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Philip Bonas. I'm uh, with Jacobs Engineering. Briefly explain the overall. <laughs> come, come, come to the no, come to this okay. side. There, yeah, that's perfect. And then oh. if you that, that microphone will probably pick oh. you up. Okay, we'll try to pick you up. Sure. Um, the state of the state of Vermont has been undergoing a project for the past couple of years that we're trying to bring to closure, which is the VCOM project, which um, is basically providing a new radio system for the state police uh, for across the entire state. What that entails is actually, it's a requirement by the FCC um, across the country. Um, every public safety agency in the U.S. Is, is required to narrow band their frequencies in an effort to more efficiently utilize the overall spectrum uh, that's available for all types of communications. So that being said, um, public safety agencies, uh, federal, state, municipal, um, have to get down to the lower part of the spectrum, which is typically around 150 megahertz. Um, in doing so, the state police are going to be operating on a new network, new frequency uh, that's got actually more than, you know, better coverage across the state. So we um, are actually the engineers and uh, constructors that are building the network, and Harris is our partner. Harris Communications um, are the individuals, or the company that are providing the radios. Uh, they're you may not be familiar with Harris, but they are equivalent, say, to a Motorola, uh, which you might, which is a little bit more familiar. Um, so uh, we've built several sites, and we've got a handful of sites left. And um, this particular site uh, is at the, is at the, the Brattleboro State Police Barracks. Currently, if you're, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the site, there's a 40-foot uh, tower that's currently at the site, about three or four antennas that exist on that. And in order to install the new antennas necessary with the application, um, we have to meet the latest building codes. The current tower um, doesn't meet the building codes. The current uh, codes with respect to antenna structures is the EIATIA 222 revision G is the latest code. And in addition to that, the state of Vermont uh, public safety Department of Public Safety actually has a, a more stringent criteria that utilizes 222 Rev G as the basis for analyzing the tower, but then puts another layer on it. And for example, say the state of Vermont, if you look at the, the wind loading maps for, with inside that Rev G code, it would stipulate 90 miles per hour. Um, the state of Vermont, Department of Public Safety actually requires that we design them up to 120 miles per hour. The reason for this. Um, is, is, is there's a few different reasons, but also in, is, as part of the 222 Rev G code, there's different classifications which identify topography, um, structure class. So structure class has to do with whether or not this is a cell tower, or whether or not it's a, like a ham operator, or whether or not it's a essential communications facility, which being the state police. Um, that's what it's classified as. So what that does is it adds another factor of safety onto the strength calculations for the tower itself. So that being said, it, it's very stringent criteria which is outlined and required by the Department of Public Safety. The existing tower does not meet the, those criteria. And so in order to um, support the new antennas, we have to then replace the existing tower. The existing tower is a 40-foot, 45G uh, tower manufactured by Rome several, you know, quite a while ago. Um, the tower that would be installing is also a 40-foot tower. Uh, it's a self-support tower. All the towers that we installed for the state of Vermont for this project are self-support towers. Um, what does self-support mean? Sure. No um, guidelines? Exactly. Um, basically, there's usually three types of towers in, in the, the industry. You can say it's a guide tower, self-support tower, or say a monopole type structure. The reason why we do self-support towers um, for public safety agencies is 
because they require the least amount of maintenance. They've got the longest lifespan. Um, oftentimes, when guy towers are put up, it's, it's, it's a cheaper solution um, and easier to install. However, they need to be properly maintained. You need to retention those guys on a biannual basis. Um, you need to make sure that there's no corrosion. So with the self-supporting tower, you don't actually have to do much maintenance on it. In addition to that, these towers are all made out of solid members, so you don't have the risk of any corrosion happening when you have, say, a tubular structure, or a hollow member structure. You won't have that. It's all solid structure, so, um, and galvanized. So that's what we're installing. The, the existing tower, to give you some rough idea, um, is about uh, one foot. The, 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 the face width of the existing tower is about one foot wide and goes up 40 feet. The new tower, north and beneath the codes, is approximately four and a half feet <coughs> high, um, going up. Um, so in placing the tower, uh, what we looked at were the underlying uh, zoning district of, of the site. Um, it's approximately, a, the, the parcel is about two thirds of an acre large and um, it's in a rural commercial zoning district. So we also looked at the, uh, the, the abutting uses and wanted to make sure, you know, we could be able to, you know, maintain the, the required setbacks associated with that underlying zoning district. So on that um, easterly side of the property, which I guess, I'm not sure if you can see this, but maybe you all have plans there. facing up. Um, this is Route 9 here, and this is the existing state police barracks, which is a single story gable roof structure. The existing 40 foot tower um, located at the facility is, is right here, and that's what you see in some of the photographs. I've got additional photographs to help orient you as well. So as I was saying, the existing tower is here. The proposed location of the tower is here, and we're looking to maintain a minimum of 50 foot side yard setback here. The front yard setback doesn't really appear to be much of a uh, problem, nor does the rear. Um, the reason why we're not putting it in the exact same location is for the reason that obviously the state police radio network can't be uh, down for any long duration of time. It's going to take us a few weeks to construct this uh, tower. And what will end up happening is we'll construct the new tower, do a hot cut over with the antennas. So we'll install new antennas, new lines for the existing radio network, bring those in, swap them over at the radios. And then while the entire new network's being tested um, for its functionality, uh, the existing radios will be utilized. That being said, once we relocate those antennas from the uh, the existing tower to the new tower will then demolish the existing tower and remove that existing tower from the premises. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I have a couple of questions sure. for you. The, uh, it's, it's a very good application. It's, it's clear. I understand what's going on here. I think yeah. I do. Uh, there are some new antennas going on this tower. Yes. Okay. Um, it appears that the connection from the antennas to the police barracks is set off the ground or above the ground. Yes. That's where the cables go, is a cable tray or a cable duct or something? Yeah, we, we refer to it as, as an ice bridge. Sure, yep. And why ice? Does that stand for, it's not ice ice in terms of water or? Yeah, it, it is. Um, so the, the reason why it's elevated above ground level is obviously to keep it out of the elements, say, the, the snow on the ground. Um, so you, water. Wouldn't, you wouldn't traditionally bury it, run a conduit underground, and then come back up? It's not the best thing to do. Um, the, the more bends you have in the coaxial cable, the, the, the more the signal is. Lost. Um, yeah, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> um, degraded. So 
that's why we try to minimize those, but also for maintenance perspective, um, you know, we've done a lot of the, the installations uh, where you run them underground, pull them up, it hammers the cables, and inevitably what ends up happening is that you actually get water into those. A lot of times they'll run, say, you know, four or six inch diameter PVC underground to bury them. Um, it's still okay. almost impossible to not get water in there. Yeah. yeah. Period. Yeah, exactly. You okay. can't have that in there. No. The, um, <laughs> the old towers. Is there... Is there, I don't see any landscaping at all to, to hide this tower. I mean, there's a note of hay bales, which presumably is for erosion control and under construction. Do you have any landscaping at all planned that's just on, on a sheet that's not here? No, we didn't. Um, I, I think one of the things that we look at under conditional use is landscaping. Sure. And um, could you tell me if there's a technical reason why you wouldn't say plant some shrubs on the eastern side to shield 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 it. I mean is there a electrical or communications reason? I'm not suggesting yep. trees that grow twenty foot high. I'm saying lo yeah. low level shrubs that would just shield this from the um I forget the name of the road. Westgate Drive, I believe sure. it is. We we could absolutely um, place, you know, so between that building between the building and the shed. Exactly. Okay. Along this line, we could extend some along that, that side. Um, some e evergreen of some sort that's what, you know, of your choice? Sure. You know, hemlock, whether it be a hemlock or an arborvitae, you know, I prefer to stay away from the arborvitae. They just get destroyed with the first snowfall, typically. But hemlock, we could, we could easily do that, I guess. Would hemlock not grow too tall, though, well, over time? Well, we prefer not to. <laughs> what you'll see is the elevation, because this is UHF and VHF, the elevation of these antennas is not typically what you'll see with a lot of the, the cellular applications where they're saying, hey, we want to be at 100 feet or so. We don't really need that much elevation. Um, I think as you see that, we're probably in the 20 foot range. So we don't want to have too much vegetation in close proximity to the tower, but we could certainly accommodate. Sure, you, you know, could select something that would stay low. Well. Sure, some use, whether it be like a U, um, we, we could do something just, like that. Just some screening. I mean, even sure. if it was just uh, laurel bushes or something that were fairly low, that something that didn't get more over more than four to six feet, I think, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It would be preferable. Six, six. Well, seven. what's the most height mm -hmm. that you could get to? That yeah, that you can get. To. I wouldn't want to go anywhere over six feet. Okay, but. We can easily get some plantings in there, extend them off the corner of the barracks um, to the shed to block it from that direction. Yeah, from from the yeah to, uh, on that face. I, I don't think it, the other direction matters, and from the and it's behind the building, so from the yeah. rear, the building itself shields it. Apart from the forty foot part, but we don't expect it to shield it all the way up. No. So something on the eastern side. Um, just 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 your height, your lowest aerial is what seven feet high. On the on the antenna, it's quite low. It is. It's surprising. Um, so I would understand why you would wish to stay below six. So the bottom, exactly, it is at seven. Yeah. Just from a maintenance perspective, we don't want to be having to go out there and make sure. I mean, uh, we've got a, a site in uh, the barracks, not in Buckingham, but their microwave. They have to go out there and cut the tree. Uh, every spring and fall just because it, it keeps on interfering with their microwave line of sight. So that's what I'm saying. If we could do something that doesn't need to be um, maintained uh, you know, annually, it would, it would just help, I believe. That's all. I think what we, what we would suggest or look for is four or five low shrub bushes or whatever was appropriate sure. in that distance. I'm not sure what the distance is. It's probably 15, 20 feet or something, is it? Yeah, maybe may, 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 may more than four or five, but something, yeah. something low that screens it from. It's 20 feet, yeah, so you, you're looking at about 30, 30 feet from the barracks to the shed. More or less, they'd be placed right off the, the eastern side of the barracks itself, extending towards the shed. And I think typically we would probably stagger them and put them at about six feet on center, plus or minus, and 30 feet, looking yeah. at five or six five, five or six shrubs, yeah. Sure. Okay. Can I ask a question? Is the base of that, uh, it looks like it's a big cement base in the yeah. ground there. Is the base of that fenced in so that, you know, that access to it? So the, the base... The, like the pen that looks like and it's in that picture there, 
that's adjacent to that or near that shed, that kind of chain link pan? Yeah. Is it, would there be something like that around the base of that antenna also to prevent? So that, that's actually... It's from climbing on it or whatever? Yeah, I'll, I'll actually show you what's actually happening there. So the, this is the actual impound, uh, the chain link fence yep. that, that you're seeing in those photos. That's basically the impound lot for the state police. Right. Um, the existing tower is over here. It's not fenced in. This is the new uh, tower. It won't be fenced in. Um, the concrete will be below grade, extending six inches above grade. Um, but basically, it will have a climbing ladder on the tower, but there will be a 10 foot tall, and the, the climbing ladder will have a safety climb harness attachment on it, but there'll be a 10 foot tall, um, basically, sheet metal um, cover, which is hinged and goes over it, so you're unable to actually climb, climb the ladder. It's an anti-climb anti device, but we, we don't intend to insert the tower itself. Thank you. Uh, any other members of the board have questions? <clears throat> any member of the public wish to speak to this application? I have one more question. On your, on your total map here, Yes. It shows your height. You said 40 feet. Do you expect any reason to have to have it taller ever in the future? <laughs> I right. can't really speak to that. Um, Are they all 40 feet or just some of them larger? All, all of the towers at, at the barracks that I've seen, you know, we're doing another one over Shaftesbury. Yeah. They basically all utilize the same towers for all 40 footers. Yeah. Your, your drawings show 50 feet as a difference in the two topo heights. It shows your pad at 528 and the top of the antenna at 579. Well spotted, which one are you looking at? Well, if you look on your drawing, it shows the top of the antenna C4. on the, uh, on a number of them as the previous one, and it said it was going to be the same height as the old one, and it shows the top of the antenna. We should print you on. Well, no, which was the print number? There was a couple of different ones here. I mean, C, C4 yeah. shows it at 40 feet, yeah. elevation 40 feet. <clears throat> no, I'm talking about the true elevations, what it shows on that drawing there. Existing tower to be uh, removed. Top of antenna, 579.8. Base of pad, 528. That's 51, I count. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so this is the survey. Yep. Top of the antenna. Yep. 579, and you got your. Yep. Pad there so let me explain that to you. So that, that's the what you're looking at is the serve the, the topographical survey that was shot um, by the surveyor. What he's indicated on there is this exactly. These are the two new antennas. Yep. Okay. Oh, it's okay. It's these are the two new antennas we're installing. Oh, gotcha. This is the 40-foot tower. The two existing antennas that will be relocated from the existing tower gotcha. are at that elevation. So, so they, they stick up 10 feet further than the... Exactly. When they shot that, you'll see that the whip, and when you look in the photos and so forth, there's an Omni antenna that's mounted at the top of the existing. But the existing tower is 40 feet. Our new one will be 40 feet. The existing antenna extends above. But you have a whip, a 10 foot whip up on the top. Correct. Got it. Yeah. So it's really, it's actually 50 feet tall. Not the, the tower is 40 feet. The antenna attached to it adds another 10 to that. Yes. To, okay. Yep. Gotcha. Okay, I'm looking for a motion to approve. Any further questions? Anybody? Looking for a motion to approve application 2012 102. So motion. Flip the screen. Uh, with, with the condition that there is. Sorry, that there is some uh, herbaceous border or landscaping screening on the eastern side. Yep. Um, I have a motion and second. Was it Catherine? Okay. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Uh, those against? 501, Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate your uh, good application. Okay. Um, Call cool. application 2012-096, Brattleboro Sipco for science.
OK, good evening. Please, um, actually, I might start with a little forward. I think you're the, the, this is the third application this board has heard recently relating to canopies and, and um, canopy signs. Yes. So um, we're fairly clear as a board. For, so we've set precedents, if you like, in the last um, two applications. So um, I think the board is fairly clear in terms of what we will are likely to allow, what we're, what you know, what we have issue with. So um, I'm just reminding the board, really, rather than yourself, that we made decisions. So I think it was the previous two or three or four meetings about canopy. So um, please tell us what you'd like to do. Um, being a Sitco branded location, we are required to upgrade. They have a new centennial look that they came out with two years ago. So we are, kind of, are required to upgrade our image to the new standard. And uh, this is more or less what we're looking at for this location on one side. Okay, thanks. And then on our diesel canopy, doing, doing that look right there. This is this is the new uh, Citco look. So there are there are just confirm for me. There are two sets of pumps at this station. The set at the back, which is diesel, diesel, diesel and that that would be indicated with diesel. something that says diesel. Yes. And then there's the pumps at the front, the um, primarily gasoline, but correct, but both. Right. Okay. And there's a ruling of uh, 84 square feet, I believe. 96. 96 square feet on the canopy fascia. And uh, so Brian, when I uh, gave him the application, that's when the, with it I showed him the whole new design. And that's when he said he would have to deny it and bring it to the board. To the board. Because if it had been just a plain face, he could have probably approved the signage. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Right. right. But with the new logo and the new and it all, it's all one package. That's basically the package from Sitco. So, um, in this in this uh, document that we've got, these documents that we've got here. Yes. We're talking about the the little um, diamond. Yes. And then the, and star. the tristar. Is that yes. what you call it? Triangle, or triangular star, and then the Sitco as being the primary elements of the sign. And that's going to go on what, three sides or two sides or four sides? Three sides. Three sides. Yeah. Is that this, that's this plan here, right? Yes. Okay. This is more of a color scheme, but yes, that's the, that's the plan right there. So the tri-star goes only on one side? Correct. The star is only on one side. Then the word Sitco is on the, the, the other three sides. There's nothing on the back side. And it's illuminated. Is the existing sign illuminated? Just as a matter of no. reference? No, it's just no, letters. It's just letters. Um, and what is the size of... Let's just deal with the lettering for a second. What is the size of the lettering, the Sitco lettering? That's that we're, we're the proposing? Yeah. Yeah. Is that 23.5 square feet? Is that I'm understanding from your... Right. 118, 118 there's inches. Words, there's three words Sitco, and they're 23.5 square feet each. And then the tri the um, tri star is 11.3 square feet. So is it that you're okay with those, just not the uh, multicolor section? Is that it? Is that what is that the straw that breaks this camel's back, Brian? The multicolored section. Uh, the formula the board's been using is to determine what part of the sign is a logo, what part is text, and kind of goes towards the area, and. Uh, if there are color elements in the sign, there's been a determination whether that's a logo or just a paint scheme. Right. So is that the, what you're basing this gentleman's denial on? 
Um, I feel I can't make that determination on an administrative basis and have been tossing it back gotcha. to the board. Gotcha. Is that, to be clear though, is that your position? Mm. Well, I think that's, if you were to look I don't at think our it's relevant. prior. Oh, okay, okay. I um, just wonder if you're. Our previous decisions relating to canopies, we, if we had a constant color behind it, then we dealt, or a constant uh, single color. And then we looked at the lettering and the, the, the number of square feet that encompassed the lettering and went with that. If there was a design element such as what I guess would be considered the red and orange triangle here, then that is being deemed as part of the sign, it's part of the branding. <clears throat> By us or the ordinance? By us and the ordinance. Specifically in there? Are you finding that, Greg? I'm working on it. Thank you. Are there any wall signs on this, on the, on the um, booth there at all? I'm not talking about pump signs, but are, we do, are there any other wall signage that's involved? The restroom building, does that have a sign on it? It's got something that says diesel, doesn't it? It says off-road. Off-road diesel? We're taking that down because we just put a new... You put a new outer sign on that you had a permit for a few months back. Right. And that has, says diesel, regular, and off-road diesel. Correct. Right. Right. And there's a sign that says propane also, right? Is that on the wall? There is in this one, but you guys don't have propane there. No, we don't have propane. Oh, right. okay. No, no. There is. There might be one on the wall, on the bathroom wall, which we're taking down on the... There is, I think there is one on there that says off-road diesel. Yeah. It's and you kind of like a poster, not a poster, but a, it's kind it's of... It's a vinyl. Yeah, right. right, right. But I think that was, that was supposed to come down when we put the, yeah. when we put the, the LED, the, the LED one. sign up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that can, that'll definitely come down if it hasn't. I don't drive by when I get home, but... What, um, in the application, just, just clarify something for me, in the application, we have, it says, ground wall sign, existing signage. And it talks about 47 square feet to remain. Uh, that that's, that's the ground sign. Right. Okay. That's our price sign, LED price sign. So, so the ground signs we're not touching and we're not considering, but the wall sign or the canopy and fascia signs is what we are considering. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So... What is the do if we if we um, look at the three sitco signs and the star, we come to a total of eighty one square feet, is it? Or eighty one point eight? Eighty one point eight, correct. And where are the diesel signs in that? Well, that no, was the discussion no. I was having with Brian and I we never we never finished that discussion because I was gonna ask that's that's not illuminated. We have the word diesel. Then I was gonna, my question to him was if we had a decal, is that still a sign on the diesel canopy? Is that considered a sign, a decal? Because we can we can get a decal for the word diesel. How big is the decal? Same size as the sign? Yes. I think we would consider a decal as a sign. I had information on it. Okay. You know, like service bay or right. rest room or right. office. It's a, it's a, it's a time. Right. So my understanding, back and forth with Brian, was we had to discuss the color scheme on the, to discuss the whole color scheme along with the signage, and then the city has a, has the, has a square footage what we had, and we were going to see what we could place on it, on the canopy. So what you, all the money, so to speak, for you, in other words, the, the, the full program, you would want to have three sicko signs with the star at 81.8, plus the uh, diesel signs without the star, and is there three postings of the diesel word, or just two? Two. So two facing the front and the side towards the highway? Correct. And so, and then, but with the similar matching uh, paint design, exactly. if you will. Exactly. And uh, so, in each one of those, what did you say? Each one of those uh, 
Not including the star, each one of the, how, how, the diesel word, how big are those? How many square feet? I'd have to guess right now. I'd have to guess that it's, a, that, it's the width of the, that it's the size of the Sitco, the word Sitco. Right, maybe even a little bit longer because there's more letters. Right. More letter, right. So 23, so 26, 23, so maybe 60 in total. So there you'd be at 140 ish. Right. And, right. and the maximum is 96 total. It's 84 when you have multiple signs. But um, this might be a sign not provided for because I'm not sure that the code envisions having two canopies or addresses that directly. In, in which case, what would the maximum be then? Um, you might Less or more. As a, you might consider adding more area as a secondary use. Um, Based on this situation, the, the elements yeah. of it, right? Okay. Based on a second canopy. Yes. And, and what do, uh, do all those little Sitco signs on the top of every pump count as signs? No, they don't. They're ex explicitly excluded from the area calculation. There is a canopy over the diesel right oh, now. Yeah. There is a canopy that exists, but it does. I don't believe it. Okay. It like, doesn't have diesel on it on the okay. existing okay. diesel canopy. Well, it's the black. canopy's still there, though. Yes. I don't see a picture of the existing in there. Anyway. Well, existing ones. That's not this one. Well, that's not this that's place. A that's a different, different location. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm just showing you, this is at another one of our locations, I'm showing you. Uh, what it look like after oh, oh, but this is where you are right now. Correct. Oh, okay. Is this going to get bigger? Is no. It, no. Can't, no. So no. the only thing that's going to change is this? I mean, the question really is whether or not we consider this is the word part of the sign. It? Sign element. Mm -hmm. What's that? The triangles. Because they're different in color. Is that so, that's included in this calculation? Or no, it's not. What, all that's in all that's in this. Well, this calculation here is Sitco. That that calculation there is just for the gas. Sitco, Sitco, Sitco. The star. star. No, no, just star by itself. Sitco, Sitco, Sitco. And, and then that star gets you to a total of eighty-eight. Oh, because that little star. That little star is another eleven feet, okay. which seems rather large to me, but. Is so that true? So, yeah. quick tip. We just approved these guys really for that electronic sign a few months ago, right? I don't I don't know whether I was or I wasn't here. No. So. Well, they just got approved for that electronic sign. Can I ask you another program. question? Sure. Um, At that time, on each side of the fascia, yeah, existing design. am I reading that this year calling 118 inches? Deviations. In length? No, no, no. no. Just what? the, 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 the word it said, though. Oh, just the word Sitco, just the 118 word Sitco, inches. Right. Without the trimark. Right. 118 by 28 is the word Sitco. Correct. Is the trimark really 11 square feet? That seems huge. 44 inches wide, 37 inches high. Okay. This, this, this one right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I the think it's about is 48 inches high. Canopy height is 48 inches high. Mm. So it'd be, it'd be so about 4 by 4, it was 16, so yeah, just a little less. It'd be about 40 lower than the canopy. So if this is where it is now, it's just the wording is just that, that side right there. The I see you don't have any wording, you don't have any wording at all on the canopy that exists now. Correct. Just, just the color screen. Right. So, 
what we need and uh, it's just a, a little smaller here and eliminating that well no actually that I, b I believe if you total that plus the star plus the other three you get to you get to 88.1 80, 82 square feet so that's that yeah. is conforming and then and then this what 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 would not you know should we determine what would not conform if you consider that as part of the sign then or the well, wherever it is where is it it's not yeah that's certainly a part of the sign it's not solid so the other two uh, applications uh, were they major oil? I mean, was, was they? Yeah, they were. They were. Scheme? They were two other gas. Two, two other. Two other gas. Can of gas station canopies. Right. Um, in the case of, uh, I don't know whether you were here, um, Joe, but in the case of the <coughs> Sonoco gas station. We took the, I don't know what you want to call it, go faster racing stripes and considered it a part of the sign. I remember. You were here, right? I disagree with them too. With the color, with, the, with considering the color of those things as signage. Yes. I, I don't disagree with the square footage, just that those details. I mean, it seems inconsistent. They just came for a sign. No one looked at the sign that they had previously and said those colors were signs. We did. No, not for their previous sign. Well, I don't know about their previous. This is our well, the one they just, what was it, two months ago you put that thing on? Yes. Couldn't have been that big a different ordinance on the sign thing then. Well, no, there, would be no, there, opinion, there was no, there would have been, there has clearly been no change in the ordinance between then right. and now. Right. And, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't recall that doing that sign application. When did we do it? When did we do it? Is this the ground sign team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the ground sign. sign. Ground sign. Right? Yeah, that was done administratively, and the entire area, including any color elements, were counted towards that sign. But <coughs> that sign, but but no one looked at their existing ones. Only that one. Isn't That's that? I mean, don't you look at? But they just had an application for changing ground sign. Okay. I guess it would be it would right. be looked at. Well, the and rest of it was kicked up to you guys to look at. Right. We're, we're looking at the other portion of it now. I hear you. But here's my philosophical statement. Um, an, an awning sign is a type of wall sign. Um, and, but the awning sign isn't the entire awning. The definition is that an awning sign is that portion of an awning, canopy, canopy or similar design, uh, device used for sign purposes. The sign area of an awning shall be counted as wall signage and may be used in conjunction with the wall sign. However, the total signage of the awning and wall must not exceed that for wall purposes. Um, so my philosophical statement is that I will judge this application as I have in the past and that is to say I am going to draw the smallest rectangle I can around symbols um, and it's you, you have to you have to you have to choose some measure by which to judge a application and I will consider a checkered racing flag a symbol, an identifiable symbol, and I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw a rectangle around that that rectangle, that that flag, and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the words. And that was a that wasn't a Sitco. That was a Sonoco. Sonoco. And so I'm going to add those up in my brain and see if it's compliant with the total signage. Um, and I'm looking at these. I think the TriStar. Right. That's a symbol, and I'm going to draw a circle around that. In fact, I'm going to draw Square a circle around. around uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I think a rectangle around it. I'm going to draw a rectangle around that and the adjacent Sitco, but I'm not going to draw a rectangle around the other design elements. And they, I think they are design elements, but but they are not, into my mind, symbols. They are a color scheme. 
And for those, I'm going to give a pass because if this were the blue, I forget which of the gas stations uses blue, if it were solid blue, that is right. just as identifiable as this tricolor. Um, or oh, yellow, the shell. For yellow. Example. It's yeah. just as identifiable. And I'm going to not, in my mind, I'm not going to count that as a as an element of the sign that gets calculated. I think that that's a that's a design element, but not not used for sign purposes. So, so when I, I'm going to now that I've announced my philosophy, I'm going to count that and that and that, figure out what they what they equal and eighty two square feet. Eighty one point eight. Right. And, um, if, and then if we take the diesel signs into consideration. I mean, I'll, I'll do that as well because that should be should be added. Let's. Um, what's the um, eighty-four square feet? Is the eighty-four square feet is the limit in the district for multiple signs? Yes. That's okay. Correct. And then if we consider the diesel canopy as a sign not accounted for, because it's a second canopy. That would be your determination. That well, we could consider that. Mm -hmm. All right, well. So it doesn't. So in, that, in which case we will not expect the diesel signs to come under the 84 square feet. I, yeah, one, one other philosophical statement here. I think that the way we should be controlling, and this is clearly a concern, a concern for the board and um, concern for applicants, maybe a concern for members of the public, the way we should control this is to pay more attention to the canopies as they go in and those site plan elements um, because it, for me, it's 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 not the signage that's offensive. I mean, you're going to paint it red. You're going to paint it yellow. You're going to paint it white. There's still a big hulking canopy in in the it, in there, and we should it's we the should area. Be, yeah, it's the size of the area of the canopy <clears throat> of the sign. Well, and the canopy is another issue, but but the sign mm -hmm. itself, uh, from my point of view, all of that red. Design on the right is undoubtedly <clears throat> a corporate scheme required on at every one of the stations, which immediately places it as a sign because it is specifically meant to ma make people think of Sitco. And <clears throat> to say it is not part of it would tempt the next gas station to say, well, We'll skip the tri mark and the Sitco, and we'll do a nine foot high canopy with nothing but our red design on it, or the Pepsi Cola, or the Nike Swirl, or whatever it is, because they know that that is now such a a well known brand. They don't need letters anymore. And, and I, I hear your point, and I'm, I'm not not arguing with you. I, I have chosen to say, the Nike brand I'm going to call because that's a that that's swoosh fine. isn't that I think that is it's, one. It's a trademark, um, and it is a um, it is a design element that I, I would count as a sign. It's not a color scheme. Um, the and and I, I I take your point, but I, I, where we differ is fairly slight. I think the color scheme on that sign, on that awning is not a portion of the sign used for sign purposes such that it should be included in the calculation. That's one point. If we did that for the 84 square feet, we'd be way over. We don't even have the square footage if you were counting the whole canopy fascia for the sign. We would hardly get one face on right. it. You know, as far as the whole square footage, as far as signage for location. It's but well, but I think well, we but I think could. we should think more about canopies and the installation well, of canopies when when all right when but people do site plan right uh, In the meantime, <laughs> see, <clears throat> it's it seems I can't you know I I can't read other people's minds, but my hunch is that these canopies are becoming larger and larger simply out of, wider and wider, uh, simply out of um, to provide surface for larger signage since they have 
been probably running into ordinances like ours all over the country and thought, well, how can we get around them? And decided that the way to do that was to create huge canopies with each using individual designs and, uh, and then saying, well, I don't see any letters there, so it's not really a sign. That's fair. Can I ask, how long has that canopy, the existing canopy, been at the site? I mean, not necessarily that color scheme, but that canopy. 84. Okay. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he's not proposing to put, build the canopies. Oh, right. They're already there already. I know. You know? I mean, if he, they're there already. So you're right about next time we should check with the plans they're going to send. Well, every, there. every structure is there already. I mean, every well, he's not extending every it. business can say, well, the wall of the building is there already. So why not make the whole thing into a sign? Um, Dr. Char, do you have any comments on this yeah, application? Well, my question has to do with the, the purpose of the canopy, aside from identifying your brand. I assume that there are, one is that you want to keep your customers out of the rain. But also there are fire suppressant devices there. Yeah. Are there not? Correct. Right. And are there, is there a code that says where those fire suppressant devices must be in terms of each individual pump? Oh yeah, they're gonna be specifically right over the pump, aimed in the correct position. Yeah, that's all, <coughs> that's all engineered. Exactly, and as far as the canopy, yeah, you, you got a choice between A and B as far as in the rain or in a storm or anything. The canopies are just a regular part of, of doing business these days, yeah. totally. And they're basically all anywhere from 42 inch to 48 inch. That's it's just there isn't really anything any different um, as far as the base height. Some of them are 36, but Generally, 42 to 48 inches, up. and you gotta, you know, you cover your existing, you know, you cover your existing pumps. That's partly why they've grown, because we have more pumps. As a drive for, for not, I mean, in this case, it's an existing station, but new stations re request more pumps. Generally speaking, um, Cumberland Farms being a case in point in West Bradford. Yeah. So. It's uh, just more pumps, and more yeah. pumps is bigger canopy. Yeah. Um, I think the member of the public might have a question. Yeah. Uh, just before. Okay, we can go there. Any member of the public have? I, yeah. Please to come forward to the to the microphone and tell us who you are. Um, I'm Stephanie Keith, and I'm just wondering about the biggest change to me. Sounds like the lighting that is going to be lit up, and just wondering. Have it lit up? Is that a certain amount of time, or is it shut down, or is it 24 hours a day? No, uh, just during business hours. Which are? Six o'clock until 10 o'clock. 10, 11. I don't know if it's 10 or 11 up there. I think it's 11 o'clock. Because they're currently not lit up, you said. Right. And that would change, so they would finally be highlighted at night. Right. It is. It's a soft glow, and actually the Sitco. Yeah, it's just, it's LED. Thank you. It doesn't project out. Actually, don't they keep the lights on all night long because the pumps are open 24 hours by the AGM? Yeah, we do keep, yeah, we keep certain amount of the um, canopy lights on. Right. Right. All, around not, the clock. not around the area, no area lights. But, right, but the ones under the canopy so someone can see when they're right, when they're for fueling. Because we have security cameras and it's a, we do it at, most of our stations, in fact, all our stations. This is a security thing, too. The diesel pumps are open 24-7-2 for the concrete use, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Or account use or whatever. Yeah. They use the keypad terminals and stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. I'm looking for a, a propo not a proposal, but some discussion with re relating to the, the diesel section of the, the second canopy. Do we treat the second canopy as a sign not provided for and come up with a square footage for diesel signs? Because 
a member of the, I, I, the board I, I would, I would for that? I would recommend that, and, and I'm going to take a bit of a uh, means-focused approach here. Uh, and that is, I'd, I'd be, uh, yeah, uh, we do want to decrease the visual clutter in Brattleboro if we can. And, and my concern is that, that if we um, take a position that you know, any change in the coloring is a change in the signage, then the applicant would really be only permitted to keep the existing kind of four color striped approach rather than the new three color diamond approach. Um, and that would look terrible, I'm sure it would not be very pleasant for the applicant, and it doesn't serve any purpose. Um, so I, I propose that we um, you know, consider that second canopy, which was permitted in the 1980s, as a uh, uh, an existing use not provide sign not provided for and permit the diesel on is it just one side the two diesel? sides the diesel on the on those two sides I think I think um, it, it's really a, a don't, don't disagree with you but this mm -hmm. is a square footage consideration yeah. Brian when we when we when we've done why do why do I think it's I haven't looked at the book why do I think it's 96 square feet as a maximum wall sign and if you had just one wall sign, it would be 90 square, 96 square feet. But because we have multiple signs, it reduces yes, to 84. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we're still way over. Well, no, I was going to suggest that maybe we took a view that the whole site is limited at 96 square feet, wherever he wishes to put them. In which case, there's 81 in the, there's 81 in the front, and... Uh, a further 15 could go in the back, 14, 15 in the back. I mean, just as a proposal. For the, so the diesel sign, where's the, where's the picture? The diesel signs would be um, seven square feet apiece. Yeah, that's fine with me. Well, I'm just saying, if he kept the signage that's proposed for the front, the rear would end up being seven apiece. Or maybe one diesel sign at 15, it could be his choice. So, really, but really, that still kind of clips him if you were trying to accommodate, if you were. Uh, three three in the star was, what it was at, 81.8? 81. 80, 81. Mm. And if you were telling him he could have 96, that wouldn't quite give him another one one diesel word. So, is, what, <coughs> is there a combination there? What, what could you cut back? Anything? In your in your eyes, if you had to, could you drop one Sitco and have two diesels and two Sitcos in a stack? Right, we could negotiate that. Or I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying yeah, to. That would be the 96. So we would have 96. Well, actually, probably right. if they're 23 yeah, each, and if this if the uh, diesel words were a little bit bigger, you'd probably be around 110 in that scenario because you'd probably break 96 just with the four words, and then you got the 11 more for the for the uh, triangle. Right. So I think it's 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 not for us to design the signs. I think it's for mm -hmm. us to set a square foot limit. Right, but if we're picking a number, then how are we deciding how to pick that number? Because ninety six is the maximum wall sign that you can have in in the town, actually, not the district, the town. Um, well, you already were making a, an exception by considering it a sign not provided for, right? Because it's two canopies. I'd, I'd be happy to say 96 square feet under the model that we've suggested and spread them over the two signs as you wish and submit them for administrative approval by Brian. Right. Yeah, I mean, probably you could have whoever's designing those for you scale them down 12% or whatever it would take to make them 96. Yeah, we can work on that. If we can, if we can have the 96 square feet, right. Just Brian was not comfortable you know, giving us, you know, right. giving us this without with a new color scheme. You want to bring it forward. Any further comments from any member of the board? I'm so looking. what would that be? I, 
I would, I'm looking for a motion to approve application uh, over to <coughs> the oh, sorry. zoning administrator. Overturn the zoning administrator's, administrator's, sorry, zoning administrator's decision on application 2012-096 and um, advise the applicant that a sign not exceeding, uh, sorry, a group of signs not exceeding 96 square feet is permissible on the awnings or the canopies in this location. As uh, described by the rectangles around the words. As described by the rectangles around them, yeah. Words and emblems, but not color scheme. But not the color scheme. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, one, two, three, four. Those against? One. Zero. So, um, thank you very much. Four, four, one, one. So, so, um, just so that we're clear, your, your, your task now is to go to Brian with a 96 square foot design yeah. over your canopy. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like your photographs? No, it's okay. Oh, I need those for the first time. Oh, you need them. Okay, um, call application 2012-109, Stephanie Keep. Please come to the uh, side table, Stephanie, thank you. Please, no, you can sit down if you like. I just want to... Um, Uh, I, I failed to disclose earlier that um, uh, I am an attorney. I work for the Downs Rock and Martin. The Brattleboro Retreat um, is a client of mine, and I work closely with um, Dr. Fritz, Fritz Engstrom, who may be providing some testimony um, today regarding this application. Um, I have disappointed Fritz before, and I'm willing to do so again. I don't think it... Uh, which requires like me to recuse myself. Would you like us to um, ask, ask the applicant? Uh, 2012, yeah. Um, Ms. Keep, do you mind if I participate? No. Okay. So Please tell us about, uh, tell us why you're here, why you're... So I'm here for a conditional use um, permit for a have one rooster, phantom rooster at 39 Western Avenue. And I try to imagine what the issues might be. I narrowed down to containment, sound level, and size of the rooster. And um, have built a kook, which figure one shows you. Um, an example of that kook, which has to do with containment, but also the next figure two shows you I've been reinforcing the fence area because I do like to let the chickens roam the yard. And so our property is fenced in and there is occasional um, hole, but I've been reinforcing it so that when they're in the garden, they stay in the garden. Um, I did have a containment issue in the past month. Uh, we were away on vacation. There was a girl feeding the chickens and they got out to the neighbors. And I've hopefully since repaired um, relations with the neighbors, because uh, when they Animal enforcement came. She stepped on some of their tomato plants, so I went to give back tomato plants, and they said that, well, actually, they had a bamboo problem, so I removed their bamboo problem, and you know, I don't know if they've written it or not, but I think that that was the one major disturbance. You can hear the rooster uh, in the morning once he's out, and in the evening around 7 now, and I guess if it gets darker earlier. I used the sound study that the town provided for when they were looking and are looking at using a uh, whole part of the skate park site and they did a sound study of the houses around and our house happened to be one of them. So looking at the decibel levels, so um, this bantams are about a fourth of the size um, of a regular rooster. doesn't mean that they're that much quieter, but they are smaller. and. Um, the sound, um, 
begins to, it doesn't half itself, but um, it shows sort of an example of what happens the further people are away. And, and I think the closest resident, uh, other than uh, my daughter who now lives behind, is, uh, let's see, is Herb and Carolyn, who live next door, who you have the letter, and that's 162. Oh, actually, there's another property at one, uh, 149. The red line shows a figure three, a commercial property that's across the way. And so the distances, um, they don't half the sound, but they do diminish the sound as you keep sort of doubling the distance away uh, from where the rooster lives. <coughs> and safety, um, I'm not sure whether it's the myth of a rooster. Uh, they can be aggressive, I guess, um, but one rooster doesn't have much competition. And what I've noticed is that roosters tend to offer themselves up first if a dog comes. Um, so, but this idea that a rooster is going to be particularly aggressive, I'm, I'm not sure uh, that's going to be so. And the positives, uh, the Eisenbergs uh, say that I have lots of people stopping by in their room, and uh, they do add a certain flavor, both the chickens and the rooster, to the neighborhood. Um, but also, it would be nice to have chicks of our own. It would be nice to um, have this sort of protective element, and uh, these chickens were hatched under lights. It might be nice to have some chickens that were need regularly and also have eggs that are fertilized which are reportedly have um, a higher level of um, protein and life force in them. And um, out of the ten chickens that I chicks that I got, four of them were roosters and I found homes for the other three. Um, and so I guess I will open what, it um, to questions. There are some uh, documents attached to our package. One of them, which you've just handed us, says we love the sound of roosters. Mm -hmm. The other two relate to, there are two documents here from the town, Kathy Barrows, the town uh, right, animal that, control lady right, that, 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 that date back two, three years or something like that. Right, so when I first had chickens, um, there was definitely a containment issue. Um, I didn't have the same level of fencing, and I didn't have a coop at that time. And uh, I spoke with the town because uh, my house was on the corner, and it was a regular haunt, I would say, of the town looking for the chicken. And I asked for them to be more supportive, because I got actually an extraordinary amount of uh, tickets in a short period of time. Um, and so as I was increasing my containment and the town came back with a very <coughs> supportive stance and Kathy, Barth and I have worked very well together since so that it was both um, uh, supportive and also following the town rules that I felt like it was newer then. I had to come before the board, which you no longer have to, I think, now to have Correct. to do. So well, you don't have to if you conform to the guidelines. And the guidelines. And I think there are more guidelines. There are more guidelines. Yeah. We, have <coughs> we we educated ourselves some two years ago, I would think. Now, um, but part of those guidelines are no roosters mm -hmm. yeah. for that very specific reason of um, let's just call it au audible annoyance to neighbours. We weren't really worrying worried too much, I believe, about the sex of them mm -hmm. or about. Uh, Roosters, reproductive rights, or anything like that. We were, we were I live purely on one of the loudest corners. We were purely, con we were purely considering the goodwill of the neighbourhood. So I, what I don't have here, but you all have, is the sound study, which indicates the level of noise. Which I, if anyone would like to come over and yeah, we know. Um, consider question. Uh, is the rooster contained inside at night? Yes, so he's not only in, <coughs> look at the picture of the coop, he's not only in the coop, which is, um, has sort of mesh around it that keeps him in, but he's in the inner cell, and it has windows, which I've now blacked out so that he thinks it's dark 
for as long as I need him to, and then I let him out. And actually, all the chickens, they naturally go in. Um, they roost. Yeah, and roost, and they go in there, and then I just shut it down and keep it dark. I put a, uh, you see the roof is light, but I put a uh, darkling over the top as well, so that I'm hoping to keep him quiet for as long as possible until I let him out. So, um, if we take our own guidelines of no roosters in residential districts, then... Uh, that's right, it's a conditional use. That's right, well, even... even um, I don't think we... I don't believe that we have ever granted... You have moved Elena, I think it's Moray, you approved a rooster for it? On Western Avenue? Um, she's on the Western Avenue in West... In West Pratt, yeah. yeah. In the Historical Society. Yeah. She was in... She's in a... Uh, What's the word? Slightly more rural situation. Well, her house is set back. Yeah. It, but there are houses on the other side of her. There is a cul-de-sac sort of, or no, it's like a development right behind her, but you would have to access it another way. Country Hill. Yeah. And well, there was some people who were actually doing chickens, like ma doing eggs or something in town, because when I applied initially, few years back for the chickens, at that time there was no rooster approved um, for some more of a business type. In the residential district? Uh, yes. Uh, it was the first one I think approved and again, I think there's been work since, but... Uh, Brian, are you aware of other situations where we have, I have allowed roosters in the residential district? I mean, cer certainly the rural district has been no issues at all. Just, just that one. Just the one I already mentioned. Okay. Liz Elena. Liz Elena. And I can look back because it was right before I got approved for the chickens. Um, somebody had a small business of, I think, eggs. Uh, I think that was uh, Guilford Extension. Remember Guilford Street the, Extension? The, the Guilford Street Extension was that small farm. Um, oh, well, we did duck, micro ducks and goats. Yeah, and yeah right yeah. at the intersection there. Yeah. That, again, is slightly more different. Hmm. Uh, Brian, any uh, complaints uh, from Lucilena's uh, rooster, and do you know if she still has them? I don't know if she does have them. We never received any complaints about it, though. Um, she does still have does. roosters because she's where there's that email list for um, post royal solutions that goes around and she's trying to find homes for some roosters. So she, once your chickens grow, then you have probably more roosters than you need in getting homes for them. But I know that she's listed roosters I in the last week. The board has a good cook pot. <laughs> it would be. We, 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 we like roosters too. Once you plucked it, it would be. You would be a very Tiny. disappointing. Tiny. <laughs> it's a phantom. Yeah. It would be. Well, we'll take several of them though. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry. I'm, I'm being. So, the, so, so the, fu the, the fundamental reasons that you would like to get a rooster here, or, the, or your your contention is, is that you're in a noisy location anyway, or fairly noisy location, as evidenced by a sound survey that was taken. <clears throat> within the last 12 months on um, Skateboard Park? Yeah, opposite the Crow Lot, which yeah. is where you are. And, uh, and they show it on that grid each house, so I think they did it from each house, what are the sounds. Okay, and uh, you're, you're requesting one rooster? One rooster. And the sort of technical purposes for, to keep to fertilize eggs, is it? To, so you could, so fertilize you can breed. Be able to have, uh, yeah, our own chicks, and we've raised them since they were chicks. So I have to say they're a little more like pets than. Um, so it's actually hard to once you raise them to want to get rid of them. And we have found homes. My brother took uh, a rooster, and uh, I have some other friends who took a rooster and one of the chickens. But I just it would be nice. Um, we've tried to keep the one, and we've raised them since they were tiny. So. Uh, yeah. Part of its attachment, and um, and like I said, uh, there are a protective factor. So if a dog came in the yard, uh, hopefully not my daughter's dog, but could be the rooster will um, be the first to go. The the um, 
I, I, oh, sorry. I guess I'm, I'm we're going to ask the public to comment in a minute. I don't know whether there are any neighbours here, but it would seem that, that in 2009, 2010, some two years ago, perhaps before you made adjustments, that there were complaints about roosters crowing or a rooster <coughs> crowing. Oh, there wasn't then. This specifically states the neighbour said her husband knows that they have at least three roosters. They are being driven crazy. Well, That's the email I, that... Okay, but I've, I've never gotten that. Now, again, are, you, are your neighbours crazy? No, no, but I, I, raise, you know, I raise the bantams, and once they're big enough, how you know they're male is they begin to show their sex, and then you find them a home, because yeah. you can't free now. But um, I haven't had roosters. Um, you know, have I had an adolescent rooster and found it a home? Because we know we can't have them. But, um, and again, I didn't have a coop then. So I'm surprised that I wouldn't have heard of that and gotten a ticket for that because I certainly got a ticket for non-containment and Kathy was quite active. So you think she would come and say you can't have roosters, but I've never gotten. So I don't know who was emailing about. It is true my neighbor works for the town, so these are perhaps private emails that I'm not privy to. Um, this is to the animal control officer, so... Right, so I would like, it would be good for me to have... Here, uh, if there's a control just, issue just, just remember, when do roosters crow? Is it in the morning, dawn, or yeah, night? Yeah, it's da da dawn and dusk, but um, it's when there's light. Um, before I put the sheets over the windows, if somebody drove by with lights, it set the rooster off. So light uh, is probably the primary. Um, during the day, if the rooster hears, say, a child, a high voice thing, it, seems to mimic it by doing the sound too, but those seem to be the times. Um, and the chickens tend to cluck when they lay an egg, or are mating. Um, any members of the, other members of the board have questions for that? I have a totally irrelevant question. Irrelevant question? Yes. We like those. <laughs> <laughs> my, my son considers himself to be a chicken expert. He says chickens fly. Oh, yeah. So, can yes, they, they fly do. over the earth fence? They they could if something were I mean they would if something were chasing them. They're kind of like um, turkeys, which is it's a, to roost. They fly up. They sort of have to get a little energy up to roost. And actually, bantams are some of the best flyers. Some people will clip their wings. I find it very helpful in that they would fly up on the roof if there was an animal trying to get them. Yeah. But um, they wouldn't normally try to get over only if something um, were chasing them. And again, to go into a bush, they go, I have a sort of low tree they like to roost in, but they are uh, good flyers. And they're about the size of a, a large pigeon. Answers my question. <laughs> uh, would any member of the public wish to speak to this application? Please step to the microphone and uh, tell us your name first. I'm Laurel Green. and. Uh, in light of the, our uh, energy future and our um, food sovereignty, um, I hope we have chickens and roosters on every block in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Please, yes. Uh, I'm Stephen Crofter, and uh, I live at Reynolds Drive. And I actually hear a rooster in the morning, and I don't know if it's um, Stephanie's or someone else's, but I think it's a delightful sound. So I would urge the approval. Thank you. Gentleman at the back. I'm uh, Fred Zangstrom and married to Stephanie. And um, just a couple other kind of clarifications. Uh, yes, um, I, I would just confirm what she said about the roosters two, three years ago. It's being so small, bantams, when we get them from Agway, they can't sex them, so we don't know till later <coughs> they're roosters, and then we did get rid of them. Once we knew there were whispers, we found a home. Uh, second, I would say um, another purpose for a rooster is simply also child rearing, wanting our son to know what it's like to how uh, chickens make future generations of chickens. Um, and third, um, on the noise issue, and you said that that noise was the primary reason for the current um, 
regulation disallowing roosters. Um, being where we are, being in the midst of the um, skateboard <coughs> um, disagreements, um, th there's some very specific rules around uh, venues such as that having to do with 70 decibels from such and such a feet from the road. And um, the rooster is much quieter, even when he does crow, than any of the trucks that go by or any of the 70 decibel or more noises that we hear. So that while I understand the noise issue, and some people may like it and some may not, it's, um, it, it's dwarfed in comparison to what we're going to have to put up with when that park's done and what we put up with every day with the uh, vehicles that go by that incredible intersection. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to this application? What was your What was your name? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim Malloy. And uh, they don't bother us. As a matter of fact, they're fun to look at. <laughs> they run around, do their own thing, and they go back home at night. They don't bother anybody. Brian, yes. Tim, just to clarify about some of those emails, um, Kathy did send those complaints to me, and I contacted Ms. Keith. She's always been very accommodating of such complaints and has dealt with them rapidly. <coughs> Thank you. Um, can I ask, can, is it safe to assume those are the only ones you have on file? Yes. So no, nothing for two years. That's correct. Right. I, I think uh, I would require that the rooster be cooped in a lightless, uh, what's the word, dark yeah. uh, coop every night mm -hmm. as a condition that, that uh, if this is a proof that could be applied to uh, every future application. Is there a problem with Cooping the rooster, a, no. a single rooster each night? No, no, actually they all go into it. They all yeah, stay okay. in there. The, um, and, and, th and this, I mean, this doesn't really alleviate you from the problem of disposing of roosters in excess of one. Well, no, that's <laughs> I think it exacerbates that problem. It's very hard to yeah. find homes for roosters. <laughs> There's some expressions about. Okay. Um, any other comments on the board? Looking for a motion to approve application 2012. Uh, 109 uh, with the, I don't know, it's probably in here already, limitation that it is one rooster mm -hmm. and that, that condition. Sorry? And the internment condition. And the, con <laughs> yeah, and the rooster shall be interned at night <laughs> in a coop that is darkened. Darkened coop. Yeah. Hmm. So moved. It should be a solidly. Well, so, well however we say it so everybody understands. Yeah. Okay, you will, um, if you hear from your neighbours' complaints, we'll expect that you'll, do, you'll deal with them. And right. the, the, we are trying to. Condition it to moderate any inconvenience to anyone that might deem themselves to be inconvenienced by crowing. So I have a motion. Uh, was it, uh, so moved. Proposed, seconded. Second. Seconded. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Uh, five zero one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with your rooster. Yes. Um, I call application 2012-120, Tripart. Now we have... Uh, what happened to 111? Green, Lake, Crofter, Green Bailey, and Ellis. Oh, sorry, 111. 111. Oh, getting ahead of myself. Stephen Crofter. And Laurel Green. And Laurel Green. <coughs> Adjustment of boundary lines. Please, please, please uh, or have you got more plans? Well, yeah, we've gotten the uh, surveys. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at that, that's good. And we've also, I don't have copies for you, but uh, yeah, just as oral testimony, by uh, sense of the application uh, mm. approval of uh, exemption from uh, the way to and bottled water permit for that site from the state. Okay. So, 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 so
So uh, pl please, please sit down. You don't have to. Don't have to stand. Yeah. Sit, yeah. sit at the table and uh, get comfortable. Okay. So I think it's. So you have. So you have a lot here that you wish to subdivide two plots off, and one's going left and one's going right, Correct. or something like so that. We're just getting, the proposal was to add them to our neighbors' lots. So there's no new lot being created. It's okay. just our lots getting smaller, and our neighbors' two neighbors' lots are getting bigger. Okay. And, all and the, uh, there's no, you know, the minimum lot size is maintained and uh, setback is maintained. Are the uh, Brian? Are these lots conforming in the district, <coughs> or they're less uh, less conforming or less non-conforming? Uh, it increases conformance. I believe increases one conformance. Is, yeah, one of them is non-conforming for area, and this will bring it into conformance or close to conformance. Okay. Um, So there is the. I have just a question. Is there an intent to develop these lots that are split off, or we're just? No, and it's, it's just, a, a, just a boundary line adjustment. It's a boundary line adjustment that the two neighbors' lots would get larger. I don't <coughs> think either. Um, I, I'm, Brian might have a better sense of this. I don't think that either neighbors' lot would then be large enough to develop in any way. In other words, they were, to put the uh, subdivide. Right. Okay. I mean. Mm -hmm. It, had we, we we did consider creating a new lot if we had taken all of that land and um, and a little more we could have created a new lot, um, but instead we we've, we've done this which okay. would preclude any further development. And the the right of way to the house that's on the remaining area that's through Reynolds Drive, is it? There was no right Correct. of way across it, these two lots, or was Correct. There's no right of way across those. So, two so lots. there was no access to uh, Baker Street, is it? That corner right. Baker There's, Street? There is no, I mean, it, it does front Baker Street. Um, and in fact, when we were considered creating a lot, we spoke with um, the, awesome. uh, the highway department, and, and they would have approved, had we applied for it, the they said car. that they would have approved car. access. But it's, it's a moot point. We're not intending to do that. There's a, there's a fire hydrant on that corner there. The, there is a fire hydrant. The, um, which which clearly is on the municipal water system. There's no water pipes or anything like there's that no water crossing sewer, that. There's no water or sewer crossing either lot, in either of the, uh, that area of our land that we would propose to divide and sell. Members of the board have any other questions for the applicant? So, as you said, nothing overall, no footprint is changing. You're just shuffling the line. Correct. There's no footprint changing, right. other than just the ownership of part of the, of the land. <coughs> Craig, Dr. John. Any member of the public wish to speak to this application? Um, we will require updated uh, updated plat, right? Tax map numbers once the once the the subdivision is done, and then the, um, it's recorded. Well, the planning department will need an updated plat with tax map numbers on it. So how is that? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. How is that different than what than the survey? Did you? It, it would be the yeah. survey, but recorded on Mylar. Yeah. And oh, okay. All right. All right. I think that's something that the that um, Bill, these, these Bill Fitzgerald was planning to do. He talked yeah, these, about Mylar. These not, the, the existing numbers don't change, do they? No, they They're don't. just the same three numbers apply, but. That's right. So that's something the surveyor gives, the surveyor will gives do. To, your yeah. to your department. That's and correct. that should be recorded in what, 90 days? Yes. That's, that needs to be recorded with the town within 90 days. <coughs> within 90 days, okay. So I'm um, looking for a motion to approve application 212111, uh, boundary line adjustment at 15 Reynolds Drive. So moved. Second. All those in favour? 
Okay. Uh, five zero one. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So do we hear something official at some point? You will get a, um, decision. a decision. Okay. A written decision. Good. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, call application 2012-120, Tripart Cooperative. And the first application is for um, to install a mobile, new mobile home at Glen Street. My name is Nancy Rose. I live at 89 Glen Street. I'm here on behalf of Sylvia Renfrew, who is 79 She's not present here this okay. evening. She doesn't I'm look a day over 50. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sylvia's home uh, didn't have the same amount of damage as many of them did that were directly on the whetstone. Instead, she was on the back side of the park. And on the back side, there are there is uh, water from underground springs that come through. And there's a ditch that carries that water around. Unfortunately, her home set lower than the other ones by about a foot. And as a consequence, uh, her uh, mobile didn't sustain the tremendous degree of damage, but the carpeting and all the, the uh, underskirting, of course, the, uh, you know, the rest of the insulation and skirting, all that was gone. And the carpeting was wet, which meant that eventually um, it was not workable. So as a consequence, her mobile has recently, finally, she received money for it. It has gone. The slab has been cleaned. Uh, a mobile has been selected. And the process of, of elevating has been uh, determined and described in the paperwork that you will have there. Um, it's going to sit considerably higher than the standard one. Uh, standard's probably two blocks. The blocks are a standard block of 8 by 8 by 16. Um, most of us have that plus whatever wedges are necessary to be sure the whole thing is level. So as you look at your description of elevation, uh, there are two aspects. One, that it's elevated higher. And the second, that it is, um, that there is a system to secure it to the ground because at that height, you run different issues. You run a question of wind as you well as you have you know, any potential flooding, but you, you've got it higher overall. So the um, Oliver Technologies installation procedure, um, this document here will show how it's going to be attached after being elevated. Uh, the descriptor in here shows a shorter mobile, a single wide, um, Sylvia's getting a new home, right? Say she just She's getting a new, a new home. home, right? Yes. Yeah, right. So, so is it a single wide that's going it in? It is a single wide. It is slightly shorter than the original by about four feet. Right. Uh, so it would, it would be positioned to the front of the slab with the excess slab in the back that works. Okay. Be perfect spot for the oil barrel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and the uh, V mounting system is going to be installed into the existing slab? Yes. So they'll cut into that slab and secure yes. into it or drill into it and secure it. And is that in two spots or just one spot? Is that front and back or something? From what I can see, it, it is, they pictured it with an optional in it. Um, my assumption, because it is, it says up to 76 feet, the center one, I don't think they're going to need to do because its overall length is shorter. So I think the plan was okay. to do two, not three. And, and the height is uh, four feet above? Four feet above. Four above, above grade? Yes. Up, above the existing slab? From the slab up to the under, underpinning of the uh, floor. So that if you looked at it, you have, um, it's, it's uh, three blocks high three. and a half. So the, the, three and a half. The method of, the method of raising it, we're, you know, whether it's blocks or concrete or whatever, we're, we're not totally concerned with, as long as it is, meets the requirement, which I believe is 48 inches. Yeah. Four feet above grade. Right. I'm going to try and find that in here now, but four feet and a little bit more, not less, if you know what I mean. Right. If it's going to be four, it's not 47 and a three quarters, it's 
48 and a quarter. <laughs> lean, on, lean on the side of... Whichever of, side is a bit off there. We'll, well, the, well the, lean on the side of... I'm, I'm, o, I'm over four feet. Carpet. Sorry? Get the plush carpet. Get the plush carpet. <laughs> Get the thicker floor. Um, it is 48 inches above grade, right? Yes, it is. The draft decision cites the proper section. Of the oh, floor. thank you. Why didn't I look there? Um, are there is there are there going to be oil tanks and uh, propane tanks or anything like that to fuel or heat this trailer? The Sorry. standard will be in the back of the mobile home. No, no, but you're going to have an oil tank in the back or a or a propane tank or. Uh, most of us have oil tanks. Oil yeah. tanks. Yeah. The oil tank needs to be secured too. Yes. Just. I don't know. Is that a new slab, though, right? She's going to use her existing slab. She's going to have to use her existing slab, right? Yes. Um, anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Is it coming soon? <laughs> I'm sorry? Her home, is it coming soon? Oh, we could wish so. I mean, I've been up with her to uh, Lindenville, Vermont, and selected all the features in it. Is that where it's coming from? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you wanted a new one on the end or were flooded out, that's where you go to make all the arrangements. Okay. But the actual home comes from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Any member of the public wish to speak to this application? Well, sorry, your name is June, right? Handicap ramp? Yes, yes. And uh, it's covered with, um, you know, tar paper or something, so it's not slippery in the winter. Because she's, gonna, she's getting older, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And because they're going to come up a foot higher. She yep. can walk stairs. <coughs> if she has good days, she has bad days, normally speaking. I mean, she's otherwise, she's all right. And it's just a courtesy that I didn't see you going to do this, but why is it do it the right way? I don't have, we don't have a site plan here, but um, a handicap ramp is perfectly appropriate. Oh, yes. And as a member of the board said, she doesn't look a day over 50, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyler uh, Moss is coordinating the process of financing and all the details to uh, bringing it in, making sure that the electrician and the plumber are all there to take care of all the details as quickly as possible. He is also um, putting in a ramp. Okay. Um, any other questions? Anymore? I'm looking for a motion to approve application 2012-120 um, site plan and flood hazard approval for a so mobile home at Glen Street. Moved Second. and seconded. Seconded on the end. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Uh, Set yes on the end. Five zero one. Thank you very much. Are you staying to do the next two? Yes, I am. Ah, good. Okay. Um, application call application two thousand twelve one two one, and this is Tri Park um, flood hazard approval to remove concrete slabs, seed and hay, and this is in Glen Street. Um, Aren't you going to open them both? They're yeah, different places. Oh, we can do that. Open them both. We've got the idea. Yeah, actually, let's open them both. Yeah. And you can, because you have a, there is a combined memo in here. Yes. So, yes. and then we'll uh, call application 2012-122, which is uh, Tri Park, again, um, topsoil and repair mm -hmm. and grass. Mm -hmm. Just tell us what's. If we start with Glen Park. Um, we at Glen Park have started the process of putting life back together. We have uh, removed a number of the slabs 
Um, they're going to smooth out the uh, surface of the land so to um, uh, put it back to a common ground. Um, we uh, we were stopped at one point for lack of a proper permit. We are here tonight to obtain that permit if, if it's uh, the decision of the board. We would like uh, very much to continue that process. We have gone to a company called SVE, Southern Vermont Engineering. They did the surveying that was necessary and um, have provided the data that you would see there. Um, they used uh, for Mountain Home, a previously created maps that they had done, of course, because they did the, the water sewer project. But for Glen Park, they did an aerial, had an aerial survey along with USGS uh, datum to establish the height of pre-existing land. When the uh, SVE engineers had completed their, their work, they placed stakes in the ground which are marked uh, with a line to indicate um, how high we can uh, put in topsoil to uh, complete the restoration of the area. And is that in both locations? You have stake, height stakes? Yes. Okay. So in uh, one part <coughs> of Glen Park, we'll find that we will need to remove some material that was put in, and the other side, we need probably to merely complete the project with minimal amount of, of uh, topsoil added. Okay. There is, um, for, let, let me just comment on, uh, Glen Park, uh, Pub Public Works, which is the town municipal department, has requested that the where the slabs came out for the mobile homes that were on in the uh, on the edge of the brook, the flood mm -hmm. the floodway there, mm -hmm. they presumably had water and sewer services to those slabs. Uh, the, the utilities department has requested that those be cut back and terminated to those. Slabs. Now, are the, slab, the slabs are out, aren't they? No, oh, to the sorry, slabs, to the again? main, it says. To the main? Yeah. That's Bring a it back to the main. Big mm. difference. But the, sla the slabs are already gone. The Am I slabs correct? have been removed. And, and, and the water and sewer they, They've all been capped. At, the, at each site? At each site. What is, what is the difference here? Between yeah. Capped on the, the main is capped on the main feed line. In other words, there's a trunk line that goes down through there somewhere. And off each trunk, off the main trunk line, there's a spur that goes out to each one of those individual yep. lots. And so it seems like what... But there's, continue, there's houses. There are, sorry, trailers that, that okay. continue on down the street. Right, but each, each spur, what they're saying is cap, cap that thing back at the main, not out at the tip of the spur. Oh. Because they don't, they don't want, they don't want these tentacles of lay, of of sewer line hanging out if they're not oh, going to be used. They want right because they don't want them to take take on water or become faulty somewhere out Understand. downhill from the line. Do you, do you know where they were capped? Where they were capped at each lot, or have they been capped back at the at the street? I'd have to find that out. I'm not okay. positive. Well, there's a just so that you're aware, there's a request that um, those lines are cut back to the main. I'll call it in the street, mm -hmm. no matter wherever it's located. And that, that right? seems like a perfectly reasonable request, but I'm not sure why this request is being been. appended to some yes, decision right. about yeah, something right. else. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, it, it's because actually doing that for each line would be expensive, and if they're excavating already, it would save them the expense of, I guess, 500 to $2,000 uh, disconnection. <laughs> They're going to be excavating in these areas, do you think? I'm not sure if that's the case, but they will have excavation equipment on the area. And if they have the town come and do it, it will be okay. you know, 500 to $2,000 per, per pad. I think this, for me, it falls into one of those categories of a really good idea that we don't have jurisdiction over. We can't mm -hmm. tell somebody. So not a part of this application? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, this, you're not going to be excavating in the land, in the... You know, over these water and sewer things. Uh, they so took the slabs out, right? Yeah, the slabs are gone. Yes. Right, right. Are there? Just um, are, are you doing any work on the on the road here or the sidewalk as no, a part of this? There is no sidewalk. There is no sidewalk. There is. It's just the, the street. It is just the street. And then mm -hmm. and then it's going to to this um, topsoil and grading and grass that you're putting in here. Yes. 
at this point, there's a rather large pile of dirt at the end, but that will be used, if it's, if it's topsoil, it can be used uh, up at Mount Home or transported away. Mostly, isn't that mostly the silty stuff that they scraped up, I think? The big pile at the end? No, they were, bring, no. They were bringing new in topsoil. Top oh, is it new topsoil? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, good deal. Um, I'm out of there. This is an observation from Public Works that this should be done, right? It's not. It's not a. I mean, it's not a part of this application. This is a. This is a topsoil in Brian. Am I correct? Uh, it might have been something that should have been conditioned on the demolition permits itself, but one aspect of this permit is getting rid of the pads and the associated infrastructure. It's a I think it might be in Tri Park's interest to deal with the situ situation now. Okay. That perhaps you should well, just um, condition them. We'll, 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 it we'll might help to say that uh, they must be kept very close to the edge. And the reason I'm saying that is that they have staked each one such that heavy equipment won't run over it. So that all of them are marked, uh, you know, all the uh, pre existing mobile spots where water lines were have been marked such that we wouldn't have a problem with that. Okay, and then, um, well, we've drawn it to your attention. We'll yes. give you a copy of this memo and we'll recommend that you contact Public Thank Works you, well, and be discuss happy it to with do that. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then at uh, the other site, it's topsoil and. Well, for, the, for, the, for most people who have waited one year, what they want is a front yard. They want us to remove any excess debris first, and then put in a reasonable depth of topsoil, grass seed, and hay to hold it down while it's settling in. I put the word culvert into the one for Mount Home because there might be one that they find broken or in need of repair, and so I thought that that would be an appropriate time to look and make sure that everything is good before, um, uh, be, you know, to include it in the project itself. So, if we were to look at this, of looking at this plan here, then where are the where the X's are with the, the elevations are, is where you have like stakes. 13. Yes, there are thirteen locations that all have a mark on them for that type of work to be done. And it's, the it's there's probably there's the least amount up in Brookwood and the most on the other one. Question from the board. Any member of the public wish to speak? Please step forward. My name is Richard Earl and I live in Glen Trailer Park. And in front of me, the grade stakes have a grade level. Is this one foot above? Is there any given amount? of how much it would save us money if we didn't have to dig out so much. You put it, you had surveyors come in, we did, and <coughs> they said, I had heard that it was one foot above the grade level. So, as and when an engineer, uh, when a bulldozer runs a grade, he will run grade to a certain grade. Now, is this going to be fine at, say, one foot level Plus or minus an inch. Let's not say the let's not say the minus instead of eleven. Let's say thirteen or fourteen inches. If we're below that, is there this going is, to be a problem? You're talking about removing the way you, where you're removing topsoil. Yes, he's referring to the area closest to his mobile, right. where where it was established that we had put in too much. So I was. But the great stake says one foot, and it is at least an inch or two below that right now, do we really have to dig that out is what I'm wondering. And when you go back toward my house, it tends to dip down. Can't we just kind of grade that level? As long as you're below the one foot mark, do you see what I mean? If you're below the one foot mark already with topsoil, do you need to dig it out? That's what I'm curious because the engineers give 
a grade level one foot above, and then over at the ditch, let's, the grade level says 441. That's at least one foot above what the dirt is now. If it isn't, then you, we're going to dig it out. But if it is, already is, we shouldn't have to dig any of that out. Then you go over where the ditch is, and it says 440, which is another foot lower so that it tapers in. But the thing that I want to know is I don't want to have a dip in front of my house, but if you dig out too much, if you go down 16, 18 inches, and you don't want to get below the road level because then any flooding would wash the blacktop out because you're below it. It would cut it and channel it. So I'm curious what the grade level is going to be. If it's going to be 12 inches, is that what it, what the paperwork says? I just can't see digging out a foot and a half of dirt if the engineers surveyed one foot grade level. So just, just try and tell me again what the, the SVE, or maybe Brian, you can help here. The SVE, SVE has been out and staked it. Right. And you have elevation stakes where, right. where, the, where, the, where the, the grade should be. On, elevation on. one foot above, is that correct? Can I ask no. one foot above what, above what it existing yeah. is now? Is that what you're saying? He put an elevation mark on. Can't we just grade level to one foot below the elevation mark? I think what's confusing is yeah. is the mark the stakes are marked such that um, it, it, it the mark is one foot higher than where they want it to be such that it's visible in some places we're talking a half an inch you only got to add allowed to add a half an inch topsoil right. so um, so the description of one foot is 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 leaving us with the difference of opinion. Here's perhaps. Is this, is this because you wish to have one foot of topsoil there? You want one foot for drainage and. and uh, um, it, it may be easier to explain. I, 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 think it's, I think it's because this is, I'm a lawyer, not a, an engineer, but <coughs> you don't want to mark on the stake where you want your grade to be because then when you move the soil to the grade, you cover up the mark. If you mark one foot above where you ultimately want to be, yep. then you can always measure against that right. one foot down. But, but I guess your point... That's what I'm saying. But do we need your to point, Jim, is it's already one foot below, is it? And if the, yeah, and if, it is already. Then you don't need to go any If we further. have to dig out an inch or two, fine. But I'm saying is, do we need to go down 16 inches just to make everything grade level? Because you want everything either, either flat or tapered to the brook. Right? You don't want it flat. You want it taken to the You don't want it flat. You want it to have some You want to have a great slight grade. You want a slight drop to the brook. To the brook, right. Yeah. So but what, why, what, when you say 16 inches, I'm, I'm, that's I'm saying the great stakes right now are at least one foot right now above. If you take a measurement and measure down with a ruler, most of them are pretty much one foot or more already. So, so the so there is so you're saying that there wasn't that even though topsoil was put in there, there it still is conforming in the areas it's put it's in. It's conforming to the grade the surveyors put, but it's still too high. If you look at the this um, this map, there is a spot here where or close to the stream. Okay. Okay. That's okay. This close to the stream, which is 34 feet long, it makes this kind of a U shape here. Yep. You'll know. mm -hmm. That's where it's too high. Just that section <coughs> primarily. You'll notice that it says that they want the land to slope down toward that and that the water will then flow off into this kind of brook area that I described yep. here. And this is adjacent to Jim's trailer? He's His trailer is way back here. Right. Is here. That's my trailer back here. So you see, he's exactly fairly far from the point that's too high. That's down here. Right. Or, or, or with it, it's about a foot. If you measure the stick down and measure down, but you're going to want this a little bit higher. So in order to get your foot up here, you're going to have to drop that lower. I agree. But we don't have to drop it down this much. 
I don't know how much taper you expect. I'm, I'm just curious. It looks like they have a 1% slope indicated. That's pretty 1%. slow. Yeah, that's, 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 that's narrow. narrow. That's yeah. almost flat. That's, that's very narrow. So that's probably in 100 feet, that's probably one two or three foot. inches. One that's foot. one foot. In one foot in 100 feet. One foot in 100 feet. Yeah. Right. So if your, so if your trailer was 100 foot back safe on the brook, then you would expect it to fall a foot. Right. From your from your Maybe one foot. So if the grade stakes out at the point by the road, 100 feet away, yeah. then mine would be at grade level, one foot below the stake. And when you get out to the stake, you're going to be another foot lower. Correct. That's right. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. I was just curious. And oh, one more. And I, I said the, the other thing about this is that let me just say is that we have these pieces of paper and maps which we <coughs> approve. When the when the, the there is a there is an element of there is a little element of discretion when it comes to the bulldozer are running through. We you can't make these things absolutely perfect. Right. I mean, there's the, there's you know, yeah. Joe will tell you, it's yeah. the, the whoever's doing the grading work will will within the guidelines of this plan make it right. right. Yeah. You know. Okay. I was just curious. Okay. Do you have a motion? Um, we're going to get one. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, is there any other member of the public like to speak to this? Okay. Um, I'm looking for. Do you want to do 121 first? Yeah. I want to, want to. Looking for a motion to approve application 2012-121, which will be um, the grading which we've just been discussing and the, the remedial work in Glen Park. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Five zero one. Thank you. No one's against, I take it. And then now I'm looking for a motion for uh, 2012 one two two. Two, two, which is the grading in the other location um, on the, the whatever street it was. Remind me. Ratton Home Park. Uh, so moved. And no. moved and seconded. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against, five zero one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I, I have a question for Brian. The board will give me one second. Sure. That, that, <coughs> Brian, the, the sort of uh, the Mountain Home Park one. Could could that not have been approved administratively? Like that they're going to put topsoil back in their gardens and put grasses on it, put grass on it. It came to us because it was flood hazard. It, yeah, it is still a flood hazard area, and, and the issue was that when they started with Glen Park, they didn't have control stakes and. You know, inadvertently they put in more fill in, in the floodway. Okay. Um, so, Gl the, Glen Park, I sort of understand. The other one, it seems like it's people's lots, and I would. I can administratively approve small structures of 200 square feet or less, um, not not grading projects. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. You're approved. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. Oh, any other business? There being no, no other business, we'll keep the motion to adjourn. I have a motion from Mr. Miskovich. All those in favour? Five, five something. Six, zero. There we go. There's an appointment. Nine o'clock. Good.